And good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Monday, January the 2nd, 2023. Now, the S&P and the NASDAQ both gapped higher at the start of Globex today and now have worked their way all the way back down. Um, and I'm starting here on the daily chart to kind of just review where we're at and what I think we're doing. And I still feel that we are involved within a primary C wave down. Inside that primary wave C, there will be five waves of intermediate degree, of which I believe intermediate one and two are complete. That would suggest that we're in an intermediate third wave down. And out of that, we likely have completed minor wave one and we're in a minor second wave, which may or may not have completed at today's opening high. And that would be the Globex opening high at 3,900. Now, right now, with that preferred count, I need to give additional room that that minor wave two is still in place. More on that in a second. I wanna also just kind of give an alternate view and that would be, I'm going to drop this down quickly. So the, the longer term view remains in place. That was the purpose of showing that. Let's go to the four hour and let's just open this up. If we're looking at this particular wave, that would be the end of intermediate wave two. We're in an intermediate third wave, going to be consisting of five waves of minor degree. Is minor one complete? I believe so, which is why I labeled it. But the alternate count would suggest that this completed minute three of minor one, and we're in a fourth wave wedge, <clears throat> which may have completed at this high, right? A, B, and we get a C, but that would suggest we're going to get a D and an E and then a drop because this fourth wave would be more of a triangle. And all the components of the triangle, as they're labeled A, B, C, D, E, are all three waves. So the C wave would be a three. Right? If I'm looking for this to be an A and a B, and I'm looking for that C wave, and this is what it completes, and now it's come back down, with the possibility it's going to go down below and take out levels it shouldn't, if we're still going to go up and get towards 39.13, now up to 39.37, to complete minor wave two. So if we're looking to go back and say we haven't completed minor one, then we have to put minute three here. This would be minute four. We get a quick drop. Now, how can that work? Well, we would then go over and I'm just giving you the possibility. I'm not saying that's what's in, but if we're looking at that alternate and we're thinking that we're gonna get a A, B, C, D, E, I'm gonna take it from that level. And this is just an estimate of what a quick fifth wave may or may not look like. So I'm going to go from here down to here and then up, let's use that right there. So a quick would be, we we want this fifth wave to get below 37.88, which is that particular low right now. And here's our support, 30, 37.96, which is not doing it, right? 37.88, but 37.60 does. 37.24 does even cleaner. So the FIB's coming down for that fifth wave would suggest, you know, if we get back up to here in the E wave, it would be suggesting 37.60, 37.24, complete, boom, done. Then we go into a minor two. So, those that's the alternate now what i'm going to be looking at here i'm going to remove that now go back over to the hourly chart and what do i want to think about what's inside here oh in a on a second wave we have the possibility that this is a and this is b one two three this is a four i don't like it because it's come down so far but if we were to rally again from here, then I'd be looking for it to complete five. But if I'm looking at this in the same fashion, that how this is all playing out and this is turning into some way of a triangle, 
then I have to look at this as an ABC complete. Not sure how, but I would have to look at it as complete if we start to break down and we come down below. Now, if indeed it completes the minor two, again, super weak, because what are we always, I'm, I'm going to put them up again. We have to put up our, just our retracements. We're going to go right from there to there. And we're looking at 3937 is just 0 0.382 for a, for a second wave, which normally carries the capability of getting itself up to 50% to 618. So we could be looking at as a C wave from here. Yeah, but it needs to stop going down. They're continuing just to sell it down after they're very, very strong. I mean, the NASDAQ was up over 100. Now it's only up 20 and, and dropping. So we have to let the market tell us. Again, if the wave two is complete and we start to drop and we go break, we break solidly below the 200, which we are, and we get things going, we should find more sellers. Now, right now we're in Globex. We don't have anything until at, at, at least uh, eight o'clock Eastern, five on the Pacific. But when the Asian markets begin to open, and I actually believe it, I think that Japan is closed this week. I think that they're normally closed, you know, at their holiday is the whole week. So, but we do have, you know, other Asian markets that would open and probably draw in more sellers or we'll see how this is all interpreted. So here's what could really be taking place. We could come back down. That would put a marker here, the possibility of this is the finish of minor wave two, but, but to back that up and give it support or confirmation being in place. It's the market's going to have to start to truly sell off. It can't just waddle around, waiting, waiting, come down, fiddle around. It's got to go. If it's in a third wave, third waves are powerful. If it's in a minor three of an intermediate three, it goes. And these higher support levels go. 3788 goes. And we start to drop. And that takes us back out to that larger picture. It starts to go. We need to get below that. We need to get below that. Again, it's in an intermediate third and it's in a minor third. That third wave needs to break 3502. Needs to break it on the way down to 32, to 3000, to 2980, where we might find the end of an intermediate third wave. Initially, we'd be looking for 3502. It pulls and it just goes. Okay. So those are the kind of the two sides. Either it's going to, we, we've got this third and now this is a four and we're going to do a quicker trip down followed by a minor two or minor two is done and it's just going to go from here. Those are the two scenarios. And I'm just telling you exactly what you need to look for so that we're going to get an understanding of which one actually is in place, which one is in process. If it's the minor three, it's going to go. It needs to just sell. If it's a triangle, we're going through a period of A, B, C, D, E, and it continues to triangle, continues to wedge. So they get smaller. And if this is the top of C, then we get a D wave and then an E wave and then a quick slide down. Put in a, a new low below here. We have support down at 3750, down to 3700. Should not go that far. We put in the finishing touches on the minor one, and then we begin the minor two. Those are the two scenarios that I have to start our week. Over in the NASDAQ, it basically is giving us the same choice. Not even, but it's not as easy. It hasn't been easy to count. Again, starting on. I will go out to the weekly chart and just I can see the, the weekly chart's the same. It's not really telling me that, oh, we should just pick up the rally and go as an alternate would suggest. The alternate, if I have to move this A over here and we're in that larger primary B wave, well, yeah, you're looking for it to go back above 13,750 before it's done. 
and make a va more valid attempt to get a 15,000 ish. You know, there's a lot in between, but that would be the alternate and then get a crushing sea wave sometime maybe, you know, and, and at the end of the first quarter. I, it's again, that's my alternate. What are we going to get as confirmation that we just turn like they did this morning, or that this afternoon, I should say, this evening. They just came in and they, when they opened it, it was always going to be a reaction to how it went out on Friday. So how expiration ended. So there may have been orders or there might some traders that didn't like how this all came out and they felt they were too short or whatever the situation was, they came in and they buy it initially. Now that can't stop. If indeed we're going to rally under the alternate view, it can't stop. It has to go. The NASDAQ has to go. It has to number one, get itself back above 12,000. It needs to break above this too to move it almost out of the way. All right. To, to, if it breaks there, then we got more evidence that we're in that larger primary B wave rally still. This says, so this all gets changed. But back to my preferred, because I don't like to, to confuse the situation. So here in the NASDAQ, I continue to look at it as, as a, Primary C wave down. Ultimately, I'm looking for that primary C wave to come in as close as it needs down here at the bottom of the primary fourth wave or the March 2020 lows. So ultimately, I think, yes, we come in and we break here, but maybe intermediate wave three comes in at 8,700, 8,785, somewhere in there. And then we bounce in an intermediate fourth wave and we drop an intermediate fifth wave and we end up somewhere down in here. And then we're finished with primary wave C and then we're finished with cycle wave A and we get that cycle B wave. Now, bringing it back in, what are we dealing with in between? Intermediate wave one, intermediate wave two of the <clears throat> primary C wave down. Minor wave one, minor wave two, it is pretty. It is much better looking than the S&P. So this is what I tell you, it's, it starts to get a little bit confusing. But if I had to pull it in and move that the three all the way down to here, it's like, wow, pretty wild, but it can be done. It should, th this is weird. See, we got three up, three down, three up. Now, if we're putting the three here, and this is all going to be part of a four, it is ugly. It doesn't look good. It's weird that it made all these, these lows, but the whole structure is actually pretty weird. Three, three, three. Wow. Okay, so if we have this being wave three, and this is all somehow a four, I don't like it. It would be an irregular B wave within a triangle. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. So somehow I'm going to have to work. What is this? A, B, C. We get a D and E and then drop. In terms of if I were to leave this here, minor wave one here, and this is A, B, C, and I can get it higher from here, then it could be more of the minor two. But right now it's pretty, pretty nasty. And it's very difficult because I'm getting all threes. This was these were nice five. Now it's just dancing around in a three. So it's still to in my mind, still corrective. And if I put that up there versus putting it here, because I don't like it there. But even if I'm having this as the three, and now I've got to count this down, and we're looking for this five down, I don't know. 
right? This is three and this is four, a one, two. And now we're still gonna get a three and a four and a five, maybe. It's just not a decent count. I gotta tell you, it just is not. So I'm gonna leave that right there for now. We're still somehow in this minor two. And if this is the case, we should still continue to rally. And we can put in what we consider our fibs, right? And we'd still be looking for 11,208 and possibly as high. That's just in a minor wave two, normalized in terms of what the Fibonacci would suggest. How it all then comes through is difficult because I'd have to then and I'll put it in and take it lower. Well, let me just take it lower now. It's going to be easier to put it all into play. If we're looking for what the C wave should be able to do for us. We've got A going up to here, B down to here, and the C wave up. Well, we got a lot at 12, 11,200. We got a double, 236, a 1.382. That fits. 618 is up here. 11,281. So again, that's still working this <clears throat> as an A, B, and this is the C wave. Now, what happens if it again only gets to there, fails to take out that high, and it really starts to sink and pull itself through all of this, where it just goes nuts to the downside? Well, then we're going to have to consider minor wave two complete and that the minor third wave is underway. So again, let's take a look. This would be to, for the C wave to complete. We have 11,154. Didn't it just smack it right on the nose of today? That's the point. It came in. 11,150 was the open. Well, actually, 2250 was the open and then zipped 11,150. And now is hovering around the lows instead of putting in an additional rally. But this could be one, two, three, four, and we get one more rally. So fits, it fits, it fits. Even with the irregular B in, in a minor two, it's, it, it could be the ticket. Okay, so downside from here, if it fails, it's going to have to start to break below. We have the moving averages again. It's already got it up above the 200, the hourly 200, and now it's resting well below it. So hard to say what exactly is the next move. What you can go on is if the market starts to decline and break back below the 4, the 8, the 20, the 50, which are all beginning to point higher, by the way, so if it comes back down, it'll switch it. The 50 will go flat, the 20 will go flat, and the four and eight will begin to turn and then eventually hook once it's broken. So support right now on downside is going to come in 11,005, 10,978 to 80, 10,950. Now, what those are just, just support, FIB support for the for an upside move, not a downside move. But if it gets broken, we get to remove it. And that would suggest that if that's all complete, then we are looking at putting in a different picture. Right now, those are the retracements for the balance. If we get it, I'm going to remove that. Now, if we're looking for the downside, we have to go from here to here to, I'm going to say right there. Strange, but going to allow it. And we're looking for a third wave. Guess where we are? 87.85, right? Even if we got down to here in a minor three, did a minor four, minor five, and that got us down to here, and we can put that intermediate three, then get an intermediate four, intermediate five. So the longer term count 
continues to hold valid and I can validate it by fibs off of current levels. It's this near-term picture that is absolutely, I don't want to use the word, but you all know what it is. It's a something show. So, and, but the only, the only thing that's going to get us in back into alignment is the market itself. And right now it seems to want more information that's going to draw in the buyers or draw in the sellers to begin to make their adjustments. Now, we saw a lot of that happen in end of year plays. How do you want to start the new year? We got to wait for tomorrow. All right. So both sides, I know it's confusing, but you got both sides now. And we have an upside and we have a downside. I cannot say for certainty. And if somebody else is going to tell me that they can, God bless you. But I don't say with certainty the direction is going to be this. And we're definitely going here. It's like, okay, trade it. But I'm going to trade what's in front of me. And I'll tell you, I don't, I trade off of these much smaller time frames. I do keep an eye on the hourly chart, as you can see. Right now, I will tell you, that's a signal on the hourly chart that hasn't been challenged yet. And for the, on an hourly basis, to turn into a sell, the market needs to drop below the four and the eight. So we're looking, it's got to come down, well, you know, another chunk. If it does, look for that signal to be put up there. And then what's going to suggest we're moving down. So, I mean, I'm trading off of my little stuff. So... That's how I do it. This is today. You can see already. It opened. It ran to 11,150 and then just died. Continues to die. And now it's just kind of waffling around. So certainty doesn't exist yet. Let's see what it does in the other markets. All right. That's where I'm going to leave it all for right now. Our next update will be on Tuesday, January 3rd.